Dr. Fabian Brillo Turville is a cell immunologist and is focused on the immunology working in the earliest immune responses that work against the immune system and is specifically being supported uh, with an incubator grant to look at paediatric MS and we'll be asking Fabian to tell us about that. Um, so we based at the Westmade uh, Children's Hospital and my colleague Russell Dale and who is a neurologist and, and myself are looking at children and the first episode of demyelination. And what we have is children previously well presenting symptoms such as blindness, unconsciousness, drowsiness, and also difficulties in walking. And they present to the hospitals. And when you look at the brain in, uh, by MRI, my magnetic resonance imaging, you can see those white patches, which are, of course, characteristic of areas where the myelin, it's not present anymore, is damaged. So those children actually take several weeks to recover, but some of them do and will never have a second episode of demyelination uh, later on in their lives, but some of them will have a relapse. And at that second relapse, they are diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis. And of course, we'll have a pattern of demyelination which will relapse and, and unfortunately will suffer that from um, in all, all their lives. So really what we are um, looking for um, with Russell is um, the first event leading to demyelination. We, we believe this is important for the MS field because when you look at the adult MS patients, 3 to 10% of those patients have had the first episode of demyelination were, when they were children. So we believe it's important to look at the very early event of demyelination. And in our view, that's uh, at least the first event we are aware of. That's when those children present uh, to the hospital. And of course, we want to look at the first event and we want to know whether or not those children will progress or not to um, MS. So for that, we, we need markers and able to, to help us trying to um, assess this progression to MS. And we've been looking at uh, the immune system and one part of the immune system, which are uh, the, Im the, the, the humoral immune response, which is driven by the B cells and the product, which are called antibodies. And when we look at a cohort of children, and we had a fair bit of them, you can see that 40% of those children are actually have in the sera those autoantibodies against MOG. And Mo MOG is this myelin oligodendrocyte glycoproteins, and it's a protein which is expressed at the surface of oligodendrocytes, and those oligodendrocytes are important because that's them that wrap themselves around the neurons and form the myelin, which is in damage in um, MS. So those children were quite interesting because they had a big, um, uh, a big concentration of antibody and antimog. So now what we want to do is looking at those children and trying to assess whether we can use those antibodies, anti-mock, to predict the progression to uh, multiple sclerosis. And, and hopefully, uh, we'll be once able to stop that progression, which is, of course, the ultimate goal. You have to tailor the treatment to what is causing um, the disease. If we can identify the subgroup of children, and that's what we've done with those antibody anti mock indeed, there's only 40%. I mean, that 40% is already big, but it's 40%. This is not 100%. If we can identify those 40%, we can use drugs that actually target those B-cell antibodies. And we have those drugs now because I, I'm sure you have heard about rituximab, which is, I think, commercially called uh, rituxim, I, I believe. And this is a drug targeting specifically the B-cells because in, it is actually a blocking antibody of a receptor which is ex present at the surface of those B-cells. So if we can use that drug in that group of patients, then ultimately, I believe, we will hopefully treat them and maybe stop the progression to, to MS.